The few other types of non-access modifiers are synchronized, transient and volatile modifiers. Let us understand in detail about each of them and how they are used. Many all these type of modifiers are used in the concept of threading. Threading is nothing but which allows you number of tasks to be performed together. So when number of tasks are performed together, what all resources are to be used or what all resources are to be free up. So let us understand in detail about each one of them. In case of synchronized modifier, as the word says synchronized, what do you mean by synchronized? Synchronized is nothing but you providing a lock. For an example, you say that my home is there, I am trying to lock up that home and no other person apart from the family member can enter until unless I unlock it, right? So here is the same case, it says that resources that is being called by a thread will be locked until unless it completes its purpose. So in our case of programming, we say that a method which is declared as synchronized. How do you declare a method with synchronized? With the help of a synchronized keyword. So once you define a method as synchronized, that method will be locked by one of your thread. It means until unless that thread or task has not been completed, it will not free up that particular method. Therefore, this method cannot be called by any other thread until unless you free up your this particular method and these synchronized methods can be written with any type of the access modifiers. You remember access modifiers are nothing but public, private, protected and no modifier. So these synchronized keywords can be provided with all the four access levels of modifiers and the syntax is public, private and so on. Then you write the keyword and this method returns nothing therefore it is void the method name normal brackets and in the braces you write the block of statement that you need to execute however normal method and synchronized method it doesn't differ the way you declare the way you define the meaning everything remains the same only that this method cannot be called by any other method until the first method frees up the next one is transient modifier what are transient modifiers and with whom can we use these transient modifiers? Transient modifier is nothing but a transfer keyword that you normally use to define the instance variable. What are instance variables? The variables that are declared outside the method but within the class are instance method and this instance variable can contain the transient keyword. But what is the role of this transient keyword? The transient keyword will allow them to exclude from serialization process. So if you are defining any instance variable as transient, they will be removed or excluded from serialization. What do you understand by here serialization? Serialization is nothing but where you are running number of threads. See what happens is that whenever you create a variable, its object state is stored in a stream, right? That is nothing but serialization. In case of serialization, the state of your object will be stored in streams and when you want to return, you deserialize them. So now when you have created these variables and you do not want a particular variable to come under serialization or when you do not want a variable object state to be stored in a stream, in those cases, you use the transient keyword. It says here that a transient modifier indicates the JVM to skip a particular variable or object from serialization and once the purpose is finished, it deserialize those. And one important thing is to remember a transient keyword cannot be used with static keyword because the static will say that the value is this and it cannot be changed and it becomes a method and all right a static method is a static variable is nothing but your class variable whereas an instance variables are not your static variables and transient keyword can only be used by your instance variable uh, the next type of non-access modifier is your volatile what do you mean by volatile? What happens in case of volatile? Let us understand. It says that a volatile is related to the visibility of variables when number of threads are running concurrently. It says that when number of tasks are running concurrently, they will keep reading and writing the value of a variable. 
which thread or which task has read the value which thread or task has written the value we need to store the value of this variable where will you store the value of this variable the value of the variable will be stored in your main memory and not in your cpu cache and the another important thing to remember about your volatile is that it says that it cannot use the static keyword let us understand with the help of an example why we use volatile in our real time this is used mainly in case of threading concept so we have created here a class that extends your threading concept and uses the threading methods you have a class called my runnable class that you have created you're trying to implement the runnable whatever are the methods available in runnable you're trying to call them you're trying to display them right so you have certain methods called run and stop before that you have created a variable of a boolean type called active which is set to volatile what will this volatile do i shall explain you we have two methods created those are run and stop and these two methods are from runnable so in the first method run the active value that is the boolean variable value we are setting it as true and if it is true please execute a block of statements it says that if the value is true and until unless it is true keep executing and this loop will not stop then we have called another method stop and the value is false so we are providing a boolean value twice for the same variable once is true second is false in case of run once you provide true and the condition says that active it means it will not stop you will have to stop so will this method stop this variable no it will not it will keep executing irrespective of each of run and stop method being called by different methods it will not stop run is called by a separate method stop is called by a separate method but it will not stop executing this block of statement until you make it as a volatile therefore you need to make that variable as volatile so these three kind of modifiers are mainly used in the concept of threading to decide which task will hold which memory which kind of a variable are locked up or which resources are not accessible